Hello and welcome to The Stack, Season 2, Episode 5. I'm joined with, by Nightfire and No Man, two well-known, hard-working, well, casters and stream engineer. Uh, I, I know Nightfire well. I spent time with him, and he's, a, he's an absolute blast to hang out with, and he's a stand-up guy, and I can't say enough about that. And No Man, I do not have a, a rapport with, but... I plan to learn about him through this episode, and I hope that everyone will gain some insight into these individuals, VRML, esports, and really what's driving esports right now, VR esports, um, and what's really driving the like the industry. And you know, these these two these two guys are it right now. They are making a huge difference. They are driving the community forward, and I could speak on and on about that, but. You know, Nightfire, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, <clears throat> hey, Sput, thanks for having me on the show. Appreciate you. Uh, my name is Alex Tukey, a.k.a. Nightfire with two E's. Uh, I am one of five board members on the VR Master League, alongside Nomen as well. Um, uh, I am 29 years old, turning 30 in December. A little nervous about that one. And uh, I am officially the casting coordinator, so I help sort of organize at the top level uh, everything that ha all of our leagues that have casting teams. So right now, Echo Arena and Onward are kind of obviously the staples for VRML. Absolutely. And turning 30 isn't so bad. <laughs> you know, it's not so bad. Don't, don't beat yourself up. It's, it's just a number. Um, Let's see. <laughs> I mean, I'm handling it all right, like all all right, but compared to 2020, anything is an improvement. Uh, <laughs> so I'm I'm handling it in stride. But you know, tell us a little bit about, a little bit about yourself, No Man. Uh, hey, I'm No Man. Uh, real name's uh, Valentine Prasajny. Uh I am 32, so I've crossed that threshold already. Uh, <clears throat> don't worry, not fire. It, it's not that bad. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, so I am a, I am a VRML board member. I am an onward uh, caster. I am an onward player. I'm an onward team captain. Uh, so I've got my hooks into a lot of different realms of the VR world. Uh, I've been doing I've been doing VR stuff for you know about two years, uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm really super stoked to be here and and talk about all this stuff. I I think we don't talk about it enough, so I'm pretty pretty thankful for you for having yeah. us on, and and I'm excited. Well, I mean, I appreciate that, but. More thanks to you because without the guests, this wouldn't exist. And I'm 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 really grateful for everyone's participation. And you guys make the show. Not only do you make this show, this episode happen right now, but you make the main shows that are really driving everything happen. And you know I can't say enough uh, without sounding like ingratiating, and I'm not going to go that far. So <laughs> you know I love to always start off on this topic and. You know, you have a different experience. You start. Uh, no man started off with Echo and then found his way to Onward. I started off with Onward, found my way to Echo, and I think Nightfire, you've always been with Onward. Yeah, uh, Onward came first for me. Echo second, but I did play Echo at the in the start of my VR uh, lifetime, which you know was right when the HTC Vive came out. So that's about, let's add a timeline to this. That's about 2015. Oh my gosh. I don't know. When is, it, is it that long ago? I think it was like maybe no, like it can't 2015, be. early 2016. I think. Was it really late? I thought it was late 20. Is it late 2015? Maybe yeah. I'm a year off. Oh, I'm, I, I, I think it is. I think it is 2015, yeah. But I then mean, they shipped, and then they shipped 2016? I think that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was it. I was on the I was on the first order, the first shipment, and uh, that was my first experience with VR. And eventually, I, I migrated to the uh, Oculus Rift. I have a Oculus Quest. I have a PSVR. I have an Index. I'm you know, I'm hooked, as they say in the industry. Well, I think we're all hooked. I think that's why we're <laughs> still here. You know, yep. uh, VR esports is really an awesome thing and especially right now with covid that's like an overarching theme with this show is that you know we're all we're, we're all social distancing we're all really stuck inside and when i talk with these younger players and they talk about their their experience with athletics 
this is this is their athletics. Like they they don't have the ability to go run cross country. They don't have the ability to play football. Um, and you know, I always emphasize that taking it seriously is a, a big thing because, the, you know, as we see this trend taking off, like this is this is a sport. Onward is a sport. Echo Arena is a sport. The other games are a sport. They escape my <laughs> mind right now, but there's a lot. There's a lot of games, and I, I really think that Echo and Onward are the golden standard right now, and will continue to be. Um, yeah. Uh, if you want, do you want to say anything about that? Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it kind of goes into the whole other tangent of, I guess, more into my background of being a uh, collegiate athlete. I played for the University of Minnesota for four years. And I played for. Uh, Irvine uh, for what I'm for my fifth year and you know <clears throat> I think my favorite thing when I look back on it I, I, I then broke my elbow and stopped playing baseball I was going to try and play in the minor leagues uh, but as I was making that pursuit I, I broke my elbow uh, I, my tendons were so tight that they pulled my elbow apart so that was great <laughs> and that's kind of like the uh, it was either so then it was like you know I had to get pins in my elbow and try and rehab and try and make it work, but that's a risk that you know. Then those break, and you know you're back to square one, or take a year to heal. And so I took a year, and I actually ended up finding, finishing my degree at the University of Minnesota, and then found a full time job that I do now for I'm a tech writer. Oh. Um, but the whole thing with playing baseball is when I look back on that experience, the thing I really think f most fondly is is the team experience that you have you know having a team to to interact with having that camaraderie it's there's nothing like it you know like those guys were my brothers you know the guys that i played with i see them every day every single day for hours on end you're interacting with the same people and i lost that for about three years and then when i started playing vr again and i started playing onward and we started to kind of build up this league I, I started to feel that camaraderie again. You know, you have that interaction of like, let's work together. Let's try and figure out strategies. Let's have, let's have practice days. Let's get, you know, let's, it, it, it started to bring back those like feelings of that camaraderie. And, you know, it's like, it's just that social uh, need that you have almost, you know, to interact with a group of people and build a bond and work together and, and make something happen together. That's what like, that's the real appeal of sports to me and i and i found that with vr and i think it's enhanced in vr you know I, I i love playing all video games i love playing 2d games i love playing games with gnomon we've played hours on end of seven days to die all sorts of different you know flat games flat games as you say but you just don't get that level of interaction of high-fiving of you know that of being able to hug a teammate of pointing of the you know the the hand interactions it just adds so much more socially that those relationships, in my opinion, just, they're different. You know, the relationships I have with the people I play VR with are different than I do with just normal 2D games. Absolutely. And I've said before in my cast, and I, I love that point that you made, and I couldn't agree more, is that, you know, I suffered sports injuries. I, I have enough concussions from playing contact sports, and mm -hmm. I, I can't afford those anymore, and I've hurt my back from cycling. And for a while, I fell out of it, and... I felt that I'm this athlete without a sport. And I finally found my sport again. And I mm. found that, and you, you create your community and, you know, having the ability to create your community from the ground up is also something incredibly special. Um, it's very true. I, 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 I totally agree with that point. And no man, how, how do you feel about this? What's your experience with sports? <clears throat> so yeah, I um, I was actually a cheerleader in high school. That was my sport. I did I did three and a half years of cheerleading, um, and it's obviously it's very different from sports. And depending on who you ask, it may not even be a sport yet for you. Um, but it does have the the core components, right? It has the the uh, team building. It has the trust. It has the relationships that you build with those people. And you know, cheerleading when you're talking about uh, sort of high school and collegiate level, you're talking about stunting, you're talking about dangerous uh, maneuvers with these these people, and you're putting yourself at risk all the time. And so through that, you build these camaraderies, and you also learn about 
you know, structure and, and communication and teamwork and all of these really basic aspects that bleed into the rest of your life. And when I started playing VR, and more specifically, when I started playing VR as part of a team, um, I really got that same feeling back where it wasn't just a video game, right? I played, you know, FPSs for d a decade and change. Um, I played every Call of Duty there ever was. But it, it's not the same. I have friends uh, from, from my Call of Duty days that I absolutely love and, and uh, you know, we still hang out to this day. But in VR, you like, like Nightfire said, it's that body language. It's the ability to interact with your teammates in a, in a almost... I mean, it's not quite tangible, but it feels tangible, right? You're on you uh, into making it feel like you're actually there. And, you know, you have to do the same things that you do in real life. You have to react to people properly. You have to uh, consider people's feelings and and the reactions are immediate, right? When you're talking to somebody over a microphone in a video game, you're not conveying anything other than your voice. And it's so hard sometimes to communicate well and and be on a team uh, or even just <clears throat> excuse me playing you know a standard game not even a league match or anything um and in vr it's totally different because you get that interaction you get that feeling of camaraderie um you know they my teammates really do feel like my brothers and and that's something that is rare and i think in vr it's far less rare than it is in any other platform uh you guys make such good points i feel like <laughs> I feel like you guys should just take this show, but no. It, and and competition cheerleading. A fun fact: I competition cheerleaded for a summer, and then I figured out it wasn't for me. But uh, definitely a sport. I was a base, yeah. and Ooh. definitely trust being something like I don't know how many people I caught, and they're like, oh, thank yeah. you know, they're like, thank God, <laughs> yeah. like I didn't break my neck. Uh, and you know, it's 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 uh, absolutely just. And you, you talk about the sense of presence um, in having to take uh, people's feelings in and because you have that sense of presence and that that sense of intimacy that doesn't exist with traditional games. And if you say something that offends somebody or makes them uncomfortable, you see their their body language shift. You see them cross their arms. You might even see them like not even look you in the face. Yeah. Because you can't see eyes. There's no eye tracking, but you know they'll look away because you know these are nat this is the natural body language that people have and it conveys itself and. That sense of presence is unrivaled, and as we go into the future with more immersive technology, it's going to become even greater. And uh, another thing about taking people's feelings into concern, you know, when we get to this point where people, you know, these issues with online behavior where people feel safeguarded by anonymity or whatnot, and they tend to be more abusive, verbally abusive, you know, we see these phenomenon. And that isn't so much in VR, you know, because, you know, people don't want to be like that you right. know people don't so you know you have this aversion to it and that's na that's naturally in my opinion a good thing because you you have to have you, you seem to have more one-to-one -one relationships like one-to-one -one portrayals of how people really are like they so i think that's an interesting uh dynamic that we will see get fleshed out more in the future yeah. as uh, this medium continues to evolve but um I, I mean there's so much that we went over in terms of just like <laughs> the I mean, from from going from uh, collegiate sports, you know, and I, this is good. I, I'm really enjoying this. But so I, I want to ask you more about your experiences in collegiate baseball, uh, Nightfire. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that and how it, how <laughs> do you think it prepared you for? Do you think your experiences with sports prepared you for a leadership position or you know the type of you know, communication that you foster now? Uh, maybe maybe the way I uh, lead will make more sense to Noman after this description. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, if you think of, like, a stereotypical, like, uh, think of any old baseball coach that you've seen on YouTube that's been yelling at his team. You know, like, I, that was... That's the kind of experience that I had. Like it was, it's a, it was very serious. That was Division One baseball. You know, I, I, a lot of people are on scholarships. I was on a part-time scholarship there, and so they're paying you to play the game, and they expect a certain, you know, level of competency out of you. And like, uh, you know, it, it was a, 
very serious. You know, I'm, I'm very used to the very, a very serious competitive environment. You know, that's kind of where I grew up. You know, I, I, it was, it was potentially, it was my living. I didn't have, I've never had a job until I have, I gotten the job I have now. That was my first job I've gotten. I played baseball my whole life. I played baseball in high school, played baseball, you know, through college. I tried to go pro in baseball. I coached in baseball for a year and then I found my, my my desk job, as they say, uh, that I have now, and you know, my it was a very serious environment. So it's, I took it very seriously, and my coaches were intense. You know, you, you had intense coaches that when you lost, they would they would lay into you. You'd get a good a good screaming at if you didn't do things the right way. You got you got told uh, how you didn't do it the right way, and then you did your darndest to not do that again because. It doesn't feel good to get yelled at. It's not a good feeling to get scolded and reminded of your inability, uh, you know, to perform. But it, you know, it's that's what you expect. That's what that's it's at that level of comp. You know, people take it seriously when you play at that level of uh, competition. You know, it's kind of that's what that's what you get with it. You know, if you if you don't perform to, at the at the level that they expect you to, then it's a disappointment. Absolutely. So that was kind of my i guess college experience but at the same time you know through all of that you you're doing it with your friends you're doing it with your brothers your guys that you're living with i lived with five dudes i lived with one i was technically common law married to a guy i lived with him for four and a half years <laughs> i think that i think that counts as common law marriage we kept moving around to different apartments uh, and i would always and i would always joke with his girlfriend i'd be like hey i'm married to him first before you He's my he's he's mine before yours, uh, and we still I I, actually, I just called him like a month ago. I still talk to some of those guys, but uh, you know you, you have it's just like a totally different level of friendship that I love so much, and I, and it was like it was so worth it was with that yelling it was so worth it to experience everything else that came with that that you know with that team and traveling the world and getting to play in you know major league arenas and. It, it was incredible. You know, I loved it. And, you know, I, I definitely want to get more of that feeling back, you know, and I, and you get that with, with esports, and you, and we've got, and I kind of get that with casting, you know, I, I like that. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but I like the sensation, you know, the, well, you have the ability to craft. Yeah. The, the image craft, the scene, like you, what you do sets a precedent and you i mean this is conveying how you want things to be and i feel the same way with echo casting i i kind of consider myself just to be a sports caster like I, people say shout caster all these other things are just it's sports casting it's this is a sport it's sports casting and i approach it like that but you know you talk about serious coaching and i just took on this uh this new team, we have this whole new brand, and they're younger players. And I told them like, this is this is a professional team, and we're gonna approach this with a seri- like with professionalism. And I dem- yeah. I demand, like there's there's no request. They understand that I demand effort, like absolute effort, because they have the ability, they have the ability to do great things, but they just have to approach it from a more professional standpoint, and they can achieve greatness. And I the, the, like. This concept of greatness. So, you know, what is it? But greatness is doing your best, coming together as a team, and achieving. And they absolutely have the ability to do it. And yeah. and I can't wait to see them achieve it. And uh, to, we're talking so much about team dynamics. Noman, what do you, like your experiences with your team? How 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 has that how has that affected you? So it's a great question. And honestly, I could talk about it for the next 40 minutes, um, but I'll do my best to condense it. It, it is it is new to me, right? It, I've never led anything. I mean, I've, I've led initiatives, you know, at work or, or, or what have you, but I've never been <clears throat> what I would consider to be captain material, or at least I didn't feel like I had that in me. And captaincy to me wasn't something I decided to do. It didn't, I didn't say like, oh, I'm just going to start making a new team. I actually joined a team in progress Um, and then just sort of through playing with the, with the the players at the time and getting to know everybody, 
I sort of naturally fell into the role, right? And um, I, you know, I can't tell you specifically what qualities it is, but it is at its very essence, it's patience, understanding, and and faith in your team. <clears throat> and I've always had faith in every member um, that that we've had, uh, past, present, or future. Um, and I think that really has resonated with my teammates. I mean, I can't speak for them, but um, I've always tried to keep a level head. I've always tried to make sure everybody is focused on not their mistakes, but on how we can improve things, right? One of the biggest struggles in Onward is uh, is losing steam, right? Losing your your will, your desire to keep playing because the adversity is so large, right? You get capped on, for example, team scores two points against you. It's a big mistake to make. It's usually the fault of one or two or, or potentially the whole team. Um, and it can really affect uh, uh, players. It can affect the, the, the full cadence of a game. And it's one of the biggest challenges as a captain for me um, to, to mitigate that. And, and more so when I'm not on the field, right? When I field five guys who I feel are, are uh, comfortable in that role and they struggle with that without me there, you can kind of start to understand what it is about being a captain and, and leading a team um, that's important. And it's not like... I've seen all flavors of captaincy throughout my time in the league here. And, and you know, they're the hyper-aggressive captains. They're the, they're the screamers. They're the baseball coaches. Uh, of yeah, the there league. are. There are. Um, I mean, that, and, that's kind of me. Yeah, and, and, it, and it happens. And it works in, for some people. It works in, a, in, a, in an environment. And if, you can, if people respect you and you're like that because you're, you're smart and you know what you're doing, it's yeah. an absolutely valid way of, of being a captain, as long as you're, you know, within reasonable bounds. Yeah. Um, for me, because I've I've never been fully confident in my abilities, I, I I'm okay. I'm good at the game. I, I understand mechanics. I understand uh, strategies. Um, I, I have a good um, ability to to sort of zoom out of the battlefield and understand what's happening on it on the fly, and so it gives me a bit more of an insight to it. But I've found. You know, it's the it's the old uh, adage: uh, more flies with honey, right? You, you're not gonna you're not gonna motivate your team to excel and perform, um, at least in my opinion, by being aggressive towards them. I want to be a captain and a friend and you know a, a coworker or whatever it is. Um, and it's been an interesting journey because I've been doing it for geez two years. I think we just had our two year team anniversary. Um, and it's evolved so much over that time. And and I've evolved and my my players have evolved. Uh, the team as a whole sort of becomes its own entity, right? It, they have a sort of a mind of their own. Um, and it's been so fascinating to watch it happen. And it's so unique to VR because of exactly the things we talked about earlier. It's that body language. It's the interaction with my players. Like I feel, yeah, you know, I've met only a few of my, my players um, in real life. But honestly, I feel like I've met them all in real life, you know? It, it translates so well um, to to real life. Meeting them for the first time wasn't nearly as strange as as it can be when you're just meeting a voice from the internet, right? Um, so it's been it's been just this really insane personal growth and and community growth um, that I've experienced in the last couple of years, and it's really been unlike any other game. Like I said, I played FPSs for ten years plus. And nothing like this has ever organically happened, right? We've tried to force it. It didn't work, et cetera, et cetera. But this just sort of felt natural. And that's one of the things I really love about VR is how it it can take something as sort of marginalized as video games um, and turn it into this life-changing learning experience um, just just by strap, you know, just by taking two monitors and strap yeah. it into your face. It's 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 an amazing thing. And yeah, I mean, uh, these, these are such like I'm I'm lost for words because these are the things that I always talk about. But it, it just it's so good when I get to hear it from somebody else. It, it's so gratifying to hear like like coaching dynamics, how how it affects you, how your approach to coaching, and everyone learns from everyone else's experiences. That's how you grow. That's how you adapt to new situations. That's how you adjust your policies and your approaches. And you know, I'm trying to find a better way to be a coach and you know how do i how do i interact with them how do i maintain this level of friendship but also this level of leadership and you know it's you know it's a fine balance because 
you know, you have they have to be able to, to confide in you, and I want my team to be able to confide in me. I'm their strongest advocate, and I will, you know, I will fight for them until the bitter end. And I, I, you talk about faith and your team and your players and your friends, and it's like I have, I have the like ultimate faith. Like I believe in the ability of all of these players, and if I didn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in the situation. Mm-hmm. But you know. As we talk all about that, I think we spent 30 minutes on that. Um, how do you? We know that that the onward quest release is approaching. So hype. We yeah, it's uh, this is something to be absolutely excited about and ecstatic about because you know we've seen this massive growth. Maybe exponent, not exponential. I can't do math, uh, so I can't use that term. Times three, <laughs> or, times yeah. three or four. <laughs> yeah. Factorial. Factorial. Yeah, factorial. I don't even know. Yeah. Um, but no, we've seen this explosive growth in the Echo Arena community, and all of this talent, all of this energy, and you know, it's it's so talk about gratifying and rewarding. It's so good that we built this base, this platform, and now we have these users who are like, wow. We love this. We want to do this, and we're going to give it our all. And that's what I like. That's all I want. And you know, how how do you guys feel, Nightfire? How do you feel about this approaching Onward Quest release? Yeah, it's uh, it's daunting almost. You know, it's something that after seeing what's happened with Echo, and I mean, it, we're still at the cusp. Echo hasn't really even kicked off yet. Echo is hidden. You have to search for Echo VR. It's not posted up as a poster boy in the library on your quest. It's not right there in your face when you open up the store. It's still in beta right now on the quest. In the, right, it's still in it's still in beta. And, but it plays great. I've been playing. I've been sinking tons of hours into it, and it's it's tripled or quadrupled the teams that we've had in the league since season one to two. I don't. That's gonna only get significantly larger when it hits the, you know, the actual store page, and is broadcast to everybody. It's gonna be, uh, you know, it's th- there's still more growth that's gonna be coming for Echo. I don't even know what's gonna happen with Onward because there's hardly any shooters that are that that are bug free and run smooth and have great mechanics that. Are honestly, I think Onward has some of the best VR mechanics in any VR game. And it came out, it was one of the first VR games to come out. And ever since it's been out, I've always said these mechanics are bar none some of the best stuff in VR. It's everything you want. You're pulling pins, you're throwing, you're holding your gun, you're going prone, you're crouching, you're leaning. It's it's the whole package of movement in VR, you know, other than jumping, which is kind of unique to Echo in my opinion. You know, it's, 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 it's something that I was like, so I was like oh, this is... Now my ceilings are a problem. They didn't used to be, <laughs> but now they are. Um, no, I mean I've broken, I've I've gotten two hairline fractures from. That's crazy. Punching my ceiling. I I I talked about it the other day, and I had a one of our players, one of my previous teammates, a uh, place for uh, Team Ignite. He he talked about how he has a deformed finger now <laughs> because he broke it playing Echo. <laughs> Crazy. Well, deformed was a term that the nurse used. Yeah, like, right. You know your hand's going to be deformed. He's like, I don't care. Stop calling it deformed. <laughs> no, but, you know, and I want to get to No Man. No Man, what's, do, you, do you expect the same things as Nightfire? I mean, honestly, you know, it's always hard to gauge. And, it, and it's going to come down to, you know, I don't want to call them banal things, but things like marketing and, and you know, uh, timing and all that stuff. But we are in the best time for this to happen. I mean, of course, it is a terrible year for literally everything. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> but in terms of VR and adoption and, and how much, you know, even personally myself, um, how much I've been engaged in VR and, and how many people I know have said like, man, I've been so bored. I'm just diving into all kinds of different games. Um, and I think that if if we it, it's one of the reasons that I love that we're doing all this production for the um, for the onward side because we get to showcase a game that we love um, and show off its strengths and then use that as almost like an advertisement. 
Um, and that's why we're hoping to reach so many people with it as well, because we want that quest growth. I firmly believe we're going to see a growth mm -hmm. at least equal. Yeah, at least equal to Echoes. Uh, I think a lot because there might be, you know, there's most likely going to be cross bleed right between the players who play Echo. They'll like most likely at least jump into Onward and try it out. We're going to have the new folks. We're going to have, you know, uh, Pavlov people, people who've been playing the, the alpha uh, of Pavlov since whenever it was launched. Um, they may jump over to, to, to Onward. And then, of course, just the sort of natural progression and growth of that platform. And, you know, I'm personally more excited than most. I, it, it, to me, and it's it says so much, it's such a first world problem that I'm about to say right now, <laughs> but to get the index off of the wall and, you know, and hook it up to my ceiling and get get all my cables set up and everything... I'm like, God, that's so much work, you know, just to play, just to play a video game. Uh, and the quest is, is game changing in that slap it on, you know, yeah. throw it on, grab your controllers, go for it, dude. doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, the mobile aspect, um, not just in terms of the fact that you don't have cables, but the fact that you can play anywhere in the country. Like I travel for work, but now I can play in a hotel room somewhere that I think is going to open up, you know, a huge realm of possibilities for so many people, people who travel and can't play all the time because their rig is at home. Boom. Now you got a solution. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a big thing and, and I'm excited. You know, my biggest concern is, is seriously growth. It's infrastructure. It's like knife yeah. fighter said, like the panic of like, can we even handle the amount that we may see here? Um, but honestly, I, I welcome the challenge. I think it's going to be a really fun, um, fun time for us to try to figure this stuff out. And and I'm honestly just excited to see full lobbies of people and, and start helping new folks uh, when, when they jump in and, and spreading the love uh, of Onward to everybody. Yeah, it's going to be nuts, man. I, I It's it's diff It's even, who knows? There's so many questions, too. There's so many different variables that are unique to this game in comparison to Echo. It, you know, it's obviously targeting a bit more of a mature audience as a shooter. Uh, in, a, in a military simulator, you know, you're kind of hitting that that military sort of audience that maybe you don't even really necessarily know about VR. You know, it's kind of that appeal to that to those people too. You know, it's it's a whole different group of of people that might that that could be appealing to that have quests that for whatever reason aren't playing Echo. You know, it, it's gonna be. It, it, I, I, I don't know what to expect, you know, like I, I see, I saw the insane growth just from this echo beta and it's like, well, <laughs> that's only the tip of the spear, you know, that's going to keep growing. What's on we're going to look like when it hits the store as, as a main, sh as a, as a five V five shooter. Are you yeah. kidding me? That's going to be a huge, that's people are dying for that out there on the quest. There's, it's a dry market. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we really are on the, the forefront of something Oh, real yeah. and big and game changing and you talk about VR for the masses. Uh, I didn't realize just how much of a computer nerd I am until we had the Quest users come in. And you know, it's all right not to know about computers. Not everyone spends yeah. a lot of their time learning about computers. And I realized this like technical knowledge divide. Hmm. And you know, now VR is accessible to everyone they don't have to know how to install a graphics card and put in new drivers and troubleshoot this technical issue and that technical issue like you said they just slap it on their head and they go and that's all that 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 is the biggest barrier in my opinion yep. we and, are it's crazy man we're positioned we're perfect it's right the vrml has been growing and been dedicate we've been dedicating time for literally the moment that's coming next month and the following months it is like these this quest these these games hitting quest are why we've stuck through so many seasons of onward because we know there's more we're only you know just with these pc bait this is just a little bit of the players that are going to get into this i i always knew there that, you know once that quest support comes it's going to be a whole new ball game and it's crazy how we're syncing up with how soon. I, I didn't expect it to be that to be a, it's so soon. It's supposed to come out. I think they announced the date is the 30th uh, of this month, and it's like we just have the Quebec. Like I'm still I'm still recovering 
if you will, from the Echo VR surge. You know, our, they're crashing the website on week one from so many people. Okay, it's insane. You know, what happens when we get that with Otter? It's it's awesome. It's a fantastic concern to have. You know, and it's like finally, yes, the best this is problem. What, this yeah. is what we've been waiting for, man. These are the issues we want to have that we can then remedy and then you know be able to support and be the. It's it's. It's crazy. It's a, it's a great time to be part of the VRML. And, you know, another issue or, well, another question, and it's also kind of an issue, is that, you know, we already talked about being slammed for time. And with all of these events for Echo, you know, Echo is just like this torrent. Like, before we could handle, you know, Palador really going above and beyond, like, no one, no one can doubt his crazy. commitment. Yeah. And... You know, how do you make the time? How do you expect to make the time? I, I know, you know, Nightfire and me are bachelors, <laughs> and uh. but No Man, I want to go to No Man on this. How do you expect to make the time? Yeah, time is is a struggle, and it's you know, mostly my fault. Let's be serious. Uh, I've I've uh, I've overbooked myself um, too far in advance. It, it, it's it's tough. I mean, I have the benefit of having a, a relatively flexible job um I, I work in the it field and obviously currently my my company's closed for um for covid um pending pending a vaccine so for quite some time um so at, at the very least i don't have a commute to factor in um to the situation but yeah i mean i live i live with my girlfriend um she plays vr she plays video games that's partly the reason i have any time uh <laughs> if she didn't if she didn't have you know, uh, World of Warcraft and Overwatch and and Valorant uh, to keep her busy. Um, you know, who knows who knows what I'd be doing. Uh, so so thank you, big thank you to her. I'm sure she's watching. Oh yeah. Um, but in terms of just overall, how, <laughs> it's not even about having the time. It's about managing it effectively across all these different roles. And hmm. I know it's going to be a struggle. I know that's you know that's one of the reasons we talked about in the pre-show that I'm you know we're using new tools to to streamline the way we do our production. Um, we're we're collaborating a little bit smarter and a little bit better, and we need to because yeah, once this onward quest drops, I mean a I have to play it. B, uh, I we have to test it out with my team. We got to you know do all kinds of all kinds of stuff um, on that front, and then of course we have to figure out casting. We have to figure out what you know what benefits or drawbacks do we have there uh, to deal with. How how do the assets adjust to that? Um, you know, it, there's so many questions to be answered, and the time to, to answer them is, is very short, the you know, three weeks, <laughs> basically. Um, so I think it's going to be an interesting lead up, and it is going to be all about managing some of the expectations. You know, so, something's got to yeah, give. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I already told uh, the, the casting folks, you know, hey, there's going to be like a, a week break where I can't, I just won't be able to cast and I won't be able to, to troubleshoot stuff because you got to plan for this stuff. And, and I want to be available. Um, you know, for the VRML. I want to be available to answer people's questions. I want to be at the forefront when we get those new users in. I want to be in there interacting and answering questions and, and inviting people to, um, you know, to the Onward community as well as my Inferno community where, where my teams live um, because we have lots of helpful folks there. Um, so, you know, we're, we're doing our best. Uh, yeah, time is, is uh, whatever. It's it, What's that... Um, <laughs> True detective uh, say it's a flat circle. You know who cares? It's fine. <laughs> it, it'll all come back around. We'll figure it out. Um, I'm I'm just excited to get into it because it is you know it's it's the passion. The passion is there, and I'm excited to to finally be able to Sorry. funnel all of it into something um, that that a lot of people will benefit from, and and hopefully get people as excited as you know as myself and Nightfire about this kind of stuff. And you know it's an outlet for our creative energy that we have. You know I have. All these skills that I mean, I'm not I'm a jack of all trades, master of absolutely none of them. And <laughs> I have all of these skills and doing this show and doing all these things, I can finally bring it all together into one complete package and it feels good. Yeah. It it feels good to be able to use these skills. It feels rewarding and and I'm so damn proud of it. Yeah. And oh. it, it just I you know, I can't uh, another thing I can't uh, overstate under I just I can't even explain. Um, but you know, I, we talking about time management. I've, I've just started to feel the crunch. Like before I had all this time, I had all this time to do things. And now like I have no time. Uh, 
I had, I had we we were playing scrims the other day because I've kind of come out of retirement unexpectedly, and somebody joined a scrim, and I'm like, and they're like playing around, and I'm like yelling, I'm like, I don't have the time for this. <laughs> I don't have the time. You're wasting my time. Why are you wasting my time? And like I'm just straight up like I'm. I'm, I'm, if anything, I'm straight up about everything. Like, you're going to know how I feel, and I'm going to make myself known to you. And, yeah, as one of the players says, yeah, you got mad tilted. I only have so much time. Please do not waste it. And, <laughs> like, just please don't. And, you know, if I was in a situation where I had a lot more obligations, especially to loved ones, to children, it's like, how I, I would, I would, I would never be able to make There's it. There's no way. And I'd be, I'd be double as mad. I'd be like, what? <laughs> you know. So I mean, these. I think you know. While some of them would have an overreaction, it's justified. And you know, I just, I can only do so many things. I wish I could clone myself. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Get oh, yeah, at some, us if you can. <laughs> at some point, you know, you have to just kind of peel away the stuff that you can't do anymore. You know, I, I had, I played in the league for a while, but as I started to do more and more broadcasting, I just couldn't make the time for scrims. I, I, I didn't, I couldn't sit down and, and not do a cast and do a scrim instead or play a game and have it interfere with, you know, scheduled casts I had. And so I stopped playing eventually, you know, after two or three seasons in the league of doing that and casting, it was just too much, you know, it's like you have to kind of pick and choose what you're really able to do. You know, if you want to be, a caster, a coach, a player, no one can tell you it's a lot of dang work. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah. and, and he shifts the priority for him shifts between what he wants to do. So, you know, he'll drop off some casts. He'll do more coaching. He'll drop off the coaching. He'll do a couple more casts. And then his team starts to get mad at him and then he has to go play with them for a little while. There's a, there's, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of give and take. You just have to figure out the rhythm of how you manage it all. Uh, and then it is manageable, but yeah, you know, there is, you do have to, you can't push yourself too thin. You know, you got you got to still enjoy yeah, yourself. Yeah, I've already given the team the prep. To, you know, I I did one on ones with everybody on my team this last week, and I was like, look, guys, you know, to be honest, there's just not going to be a lot of time for me to play, and it, it it hurt. It like physically hurt me to say that to my to my own players. But I was like, I, you know, I legitimately cannot commit to to certain times and certain dates. There's just so much going on, and I I can't guarantee that I'll be around. But I love my team too much to leave. You know, I was like, you're going to have to vote kick me like <laughs> hard kick me out of this team. If you want me out of here, because I want to stick around. I want to play when I can. Um, and and yeah, like I said, it, it is that delicate balance. I have to figure out, like, how long am I going to do that for? Because I do want to get back in there and, and crack some skulls with the boys, yeah. um, you know, and, and it's important to me. It's important to my team. And, and I understand why. So, um, yeah, it's definitely it's going to be a struggle. But that's that's the whole that's the whole point. That's why we're here. Figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it goes uh, yes, to show how much we love the VRML and doing it, right? If, if he's willing to give up a game he's put thousands of hours into to invest time into the VRML, it's, uh, you know, we're very dedicated to this league. It's It takes up a lot of our time. Yeah. This is a, what may have started as a passion project. I don't, I don't know the origins of it, but, you know, now I can see how I can understand how other people feel like those uh, individuals who start these businesses and they dedicate their lives to them and it's their legacy. And now I see that. Yeah. Now I understand that 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 line of thinking. Yeah. And I got I have my teammates um, and my player is in this uh, in the chat saying um, they asked if No Man Plays Onward and Prefontaine was nice enough to respond. But you know they love busting my chops, like in the, <laughs> like. And it's like the it's uh, I'm 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 a different I'm much different as a coach as I am a player as a player like I I'm playing with them I'm saying stupid stuff and having fun and I someone said like oh with these younger players you're like babysitting <laughs> <laughs> and I told that to them and they they brought it up and they they're like no we're babysitting you. So it's a fun little. I really like the the players. It's we have this, we have these fun interactions. We, we're playing, and they're they're all smart asses. 
every single one of them is a smart ass. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Yep. Bingo. Yeah. And, I don't know. It's interesting to think about, though, because at some point, it's good. It, you know, I think it's really good that you have such a huge influx of young players into the game. You know, it's uh, you have to they have to, they, have to be, they, they have to be coached, you know, and the youth are the guys that dominate esports. <laughs> you know, it's not it's not old dudes that are 40, but are the ones that are winning championships uh, in esports arenas it's the 13 year olds that are getting 13 million dollars in Fortnite. you know it's these guys that have snap quick snap reaction time and and these unbelievable reflexes and now you kind of got this infusion of youth into echo and you know it's like it's really an interesting time i just when i was watching the finals it's like this could really depending on what vr turns into it's like we need a little league, you know, we need dads coaching their sons to throw the disc and get good at passing, you know, like, like in dads to coach teams, you know what I mean? Like that's the next evolution. That's the next step is to literally, you know, and, and then that grows up and then those kids grow and play the game. And then, then you have the incredible competitive level of 17 to 18 year old. That's a three year veteran of the game and is going to, juke your pants off yeah dumb. you know <laughs> and it's 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 been a lot and you know it's been something i've been saying for a long time ever since we've been playing doing vrml and doing this as an esport it's like you know for onward we have a very mature audience you know it, it, it right now it's only on the pc and so you can only play it if you have an expensive computer it's a shooter so you obviously have that natural more old the natural older audience and it's a realistic shooter. So it's, you know, even then it appeals even more to a more military kind of guy, if you will. Uh, we have, we have a couple of people that are ex military that play the game and it, it has that sort of appeal where it's, it's very realistic. And so right now our user base is very still much, uh, dudes that have kids that play the game when, when they enjoy it. And I, I'm really interested, interested to see an influx of a younger audience into the game because, you know, they're going to be di guys are going to be diving, you know, you know, when you're going to take shots of guys and they're going to be dropping to the ground and you're going to think you killed somebody and it's going to be some kid that is fast, faster than lightning, you know, and, and literally threw his body onto the ground and doesn't bruise and is fine, you know, and, and then springs back up and shoots you in the head. Like it's going to be a, it's a totally, going to be a totally new type of player. So, it, you know, it's, it's exciting. Like it's, a, it's, it's interesting. It's going to be fun to see how it all evolves and where it all leads to uh, as in terms of the sport as a whole and, and for just all of VR esports. Because I think que if you're not on Quest, it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a uphill battle to, to really, you're going to have to have something special to build a user base that stays. You know, Onward was something special. That's why that user base has stayed. Echo was something special. That's why the user base stayed. And I don't know, man. Once you get to Quest, it's just all all bets are off. It's you know, who, who knows? Anybody can pick it up. It's available to, like you said, I've been selling it like an Xbox. I tell people, pick up the Oculus Quest. It's a console. It's an all-in-one. You know, you're basically buying an Xbox. It's the same thing. You know, I convinced my sister to go half and half with my uh, nephew on a on a Quest, and now he's got it shipped coming to him. And I'm stoked, man. I'm looking forward to playing catch with the with the disc with him and everything. Like it's gonna be awesome. Like I'll be able to interact with my nephew at such a better level than him yelling at me in Fortnite to build bridges, and <laughs> get this rocket, get into the helicopter. Uh, you know, I'll be able. To, yeah, you throw the disc like a. You know, it'll be. <laughs> he'll love it. I hate Fortnite. I tried. I tried. Like, because I'm like, this game is so successful. What? Like, it's like they had to. Like, they had to have done something brilliant. So I have to try it out. And I'm like, I don't get this whole concept of building and shooting. I'm like, too old, man. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm like, I, I never got like, it. The, it teaches like these management skills and like it's insane, dude. The, the, yeah, the, the, the that game as an esport is unbelievable. Those kids, it, their reaction time, their ability to quick re—it's just ridiculous. The the amount of building and editing they do, how fast they do it. You know, it, I watch it just to be wowed. I I I don't like. I, I like play. You know, it's fun to play with my nephews. I admit, it's fun to play video games with my nieces and nephews, but. 
you know, I don't, I don't go and play Fortnite on solo and, and, you know, hope to get a couple of W's. I'm, it's just for my nieces and nephews, you know, but I like watching it as an esport. It is actually to me somewhat entertaining just because I can see that skill. It's just, a, that's a visible, it's, it's easy to, it's hard to see what the heck's going on, but if you can understand it, you can see how talented those kids are. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. Um, the difference in games that are being presented to the youth. Like when we were young, uh, we didn't have, I mean, we're all like three years in the same, like age, like we're all millennials. Yeah. And Star Fox. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like do a barrel roll. Yeah. <laughs> do a, do a, like that was the most difficult thing. Like do a barrel roll. Yeah. Do a barrel roll. Mm-hmm. And, uh, now it's like, all right, you have to manage like three angles of attack. You have to Your build resources. Yeah. 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 <laughs> your environment the hundred literally the hundred people around you and how they're all going to approach you it's insane you know yeah the sport but it's uh it's you know i think that obviously when you get down to it vr esports is where it's at that's the future it's uh it's there's it's it's physical interaction it's people sweating playing a video game and it discredits all of the arguments that people have against esports as a sport it's it's now this is a real sport this is you getting physical this is you throwing the disc this is you learning mechanics this is you throwing grenades this is you understanding how to throw how to work as a team and and communicate you know it's it's such a different level of sport and uh, I just look forward to the future. Everything is so it's, so, so, it's so bright, you know, the quests are selling out the same day they go available. You know, I had to tell my nephew, I, I'm following Twitter feeds of when these things go live so I can text my nephew, pick one up now. And then they're by speeding to go buy one. I want a gigabyte 64. You don't need 120. It's fine. I get the, you know, <laughs> just scrambling to pick one up. And it's, uh, it's, I mean, I, I have a, I have a, I have a fascinating story. I'd love to share. I know we're running short on time. Just a quick, uh, we're talking a lot about, you know, parents showing their kids, but I have a fantastic story about my dad. Um, I, br- <laughs> I bring my quest everywhere. You know, I bring my quest to every location I could possibly think of. I bring it to every family event, um, probably to the detriment of, of social interaction. But um, <laughs> but I brought it to my to my dad in Chicago and, and we, you know, I showed him. I showed everybody in the family. Uh, you know, I started him off on simple stuff like Google Map, you know, Google Street View. Um, or, or like the sort of the video experience just to get them acclimated. And, uh, you know, we sort of graduated to, to Beat Saber and to, you know, Richie's Plank Experience and all kinds of kooky stuff that was available on the Quest at the time. And, uh, you know, they, they loved it. They played it. I felt like they had a good time with it. But I didn't really realize, like, how into it. Like, my dad played, um, he played my entire library, my entire Quest library. I think it was like 17 games at the time in the span of the three days that I was there. Um, and they went out and bought a quest. Like my mom called me one day and she's like, Hey, what is this? Like, how do we do this? Where do we get it? And so I was like, it's easy. Just go to Best Buy. Boom. Here it is. 64 gigs. Go nuts. <laughs> and so I've been talking to my dad in the last couple of weeks and, um, he found pistol whip and he found beat saber and my dad will go through and he'll play every single pistol whip song and beat it on the multis, like almost every night. And that's his exercise now. And to me, that scenario is so interesting and fascinating. My, my dad's in his fifties, yeah. you know, and he's not, he's not a, by any means, like a very, uh, he doesn't exercise very often. You know, he, he, he works a very demanding job and, uh, he's tired all the time and it's totally understandable, but even still he found this passion for this, you know, I mean, it's a video game console not of his generation. He's not even from, you know, originally from the United States. So it's all relatively new. And he just loves it. And to, for me to bring that to somebody who wasn't a gamer, who had no interest in video games up until that point, um, and to have him fall so in love with it. And even my mom is like, oh, thank goodness, because he never goes outside. <laughs> he never does any activity. <laughs> so thank you for getting him like up and moving and, and doing things, around, you know. And it's so interesting and fascinating how how even that dynamic has shifted. How kids are now showing their parents and and everybody in their community um, this this awesome tool. And the fact that Onward is coming to it, and the fact that Quest is on, or that uh, I'm sorry Echo is on it, um, only gets me more excited. I would love 
to play onward with my dad. I'm already telling my team like, hey, the 30th, everybody clear your schedules. <laughs> we're getting into the lobby and we're killing it with my dad. Um, and it's it's just such a it's such an amazing platform. It's grown so much. And I mean, seriously, like I cannot wait for Quest 2.0. I can't wait for Onward 2.0, Echo 2.0, all this amazing stuff that I know is coming down the pipes. And and that's why I'm so passionate about doing what we do for the VRML. Um, I, as much I want to do as much as I can do to push all of that forward and and have people experience it and fall in love with it, like you know, like my dad did with uh, with the Quest. I think it's going to be a great thing. Um, across the uh, across the globe. I, I, what a terrific story! I mean, I, I've I've so enjoyed this episode, and everyone has had such good anecdotes, good stories, and I like my my father didn't take this seriously until I ended up going to London, mm-hmm. and then he's like, okay, this is something. And I can't, I, I won't be able to get that, that man towards, uh, I, my father's a former, he's a retired Marine Corps officer. Mm. He was uh, a very skilled marksman, a very skilled shooter. And I put him in Onward once and he's like, okay. He's like sitting there like ping, ping, ping. I'm like, all right, I don't know how, like if that's not going <laughs> to get you into it, then you just, I, I don't know. The same I, way. It's an age, there, there is an age, there is a limit. Yeah. You know, my dad's 70. <laughs> And I, you know, I can every single, almost every week, I, I tell him, hey, man, we could be playing video games together. You know, you, can, you and me, we could be doing, we could be bonding. And he's just like, nah, he's not going to do it. It's just like, it's just not a video <laughs> game guy. He's, it's just something in him. He's too old or something. He just doesn't want to do it. Not even VR. You know, I just don't, it's like, I, I don't know what to do, dude. I'm trying to tell him, you know, there's great single player games, there's stories, there's movies and some people, you know, they just, uh, impossible to convince. On the, on the flip side, my mother loves yeah, it. Yeah, my mom does too. And, <laughs> yeah. and I, I've been trying to get money together for Quest to, because like, I want to play with the Rift and I was like, I'm really afraid of her getting tangled right. in the cord and hurting herself. Like, I don't want to be... I would never forgive myself. Sure. So, like, I want to get a quest, and then, you know, I just, you know, haven't had the finances. So, if Oculus ever watches this, you know, send me a quest. I'll, I'll love you forever. Uh, <laughs> no, but I think I already love them forever. Uh, but really, you know, I want to, I want to share that, and you guys have that same type of, you know, that same visceral feeling. And you know that just it's a, it's a really great thing. And uh, how much we're we're in an hour, so we, we're really we're really cutting <laughs> close. Mm-hmm. And um, no, but we've talked about the approaching onward quest release, our expectations for it, for the community, for VML, uh, the passion of VR, like the passion for VML, the passion for sport, the passion for community and you know really like we're, we're sitting in the house that we built mm-hmm. and you know you know this is this is ours this is our respective communities are born through our efforts they are what they are through our efforts yeah, right. and that's that is such an amazing place to be and it, it's not only is it gratifying rewarding and it's it just it's really something spectacular, and it's beautiful. I think we're all in the, yeah, uh, yeah. It's 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 beautiful, and I, I I keep catching myself short for words because it just it's unique. This is something that it's very it's unique. unique. There, there's the, you know I think that's the reason VRML is succeeding in the VR space because we're unique. We're designed for community engagement. We're designed to be built around the community. You know, if your community has the has the dedication and loves the game and wants to make videos, wants to cast, wants to, we provide the outlet for it. And we've honed in this space that I think works so well. You know, it's easy to schedule games on the website. It's, it's designed for, you know, a, a widespread amount of players, a wide range of skill base. It's not exclusive to anybody. But at the same time, when you get to that top level, it's super competitive. It is these guys taking it seriously because we offer prizes. We offer a couple little things on the side that, that kind of instigate that little extra bit of dedication. 
And, you know, it just, it's a good fit. It, it, it fits perfectly for esports. And no, no other esport really does it that way. They're, they're businesses or companies. They're, they're not, they're not trying to gear around building the community, letting the community build it per se. You know, I think that's kind of where the, the unique thing approach of VRML is, is that we really want the communities to build it. We want them to be the ones that, that make it what it is because it is rewarding. It's much more rewarding that way as a community to build your own esport and have it be yours and be and you be involved directly, in my opinion. And so you know, you just it's a good formula and it works great for VR. It's perfect fit. And I couldn't agree more. And I think as we're approaching the end of this, uh, no man, do you have any, do you have anything to add on that? <sighs> man. We're at the end. I mean, I'm gonna come on. Yeah. You're gonna put me right at the uh, end. Yeah, that's <laughs> big, Where that's can I add? Uh, <laughs> you you had the great story. We like whole, you, you've all we had could do a whole other podcast. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk, We could talk for another hour. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, yeah. <laughs> episode two will be later. I'm sure. Sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. I mean, I'm I'm so um, excited. I'm so um, you know hashtag blessed uh, to to be surrounded by you know. Uh, by and large, one of the best communities uh, ever. And I'm not just talking about Onward. I'm talking about the VR community. Yeah. I'm talking about Echo. I'm talking about, uh, you know, uh, Final Assault. I'm talking about all the games we got in VRML. I'm talking about all the players I've met, um, I, you know, and the VRML itself. I mean, the the five uh, guys on the board who, who've been putting their blood, sweat, and tears, and, and a sixth one who um, had to make a sacrifice. He had to make a cut because uh, he's working so hard in another part of the VR space um, that he just doesn't have time for for uh, for other responsibilities. And you know, they put so much effort in. You know, Nightfire and I are just literally like the tip of this little iceberg. I mean, we do a small section. You know, Doc, and the owner of the VRML, is just he's. I feel like he's an octopus dude. He's got like seventeen hands At and they're doing like eight. eight. You know, he's got a family. He's got kids, and he runs this amazing league. And and honestly, I would say like 49 percent of why I'm here is like respect for him putting in that kind of effort and dedicating that kind of time to building this community and seeing how much he loves it and how much time and effort he wants to put into it and how much he wants to see it grow really inspires, you know, it, it inspired me to become more active in this um, in this community. It inspired me to, you know, of course, to the detriment of my uh, of my team to help with production and, and help Nightfire. Um, and all this stuff. And I, it's just, it's been this insane journey. You know, every piece of it has been individual. It's been interesting. Um, but it's gotten us to this point where we can make this amazing content. We can reach out to these amazing games and amazing communities and bring them together. And like, seriously, if you're, if you're not in it, try it. Yeah, I'm not saying you're going to love it. I'm not going to say, you know, you're not going to stay necessarily. I get some people get headaches with VR or, <laughs> or what have you. But seriously, give it a chance. Because even even if you just small uh, find a small microcosm of a community, as I've seen a lot of people do, they'll find little groups or, or, or specific games or their own little communities uh, to to flourish in. It's It's so rewarding and gratifying to see those people succeed and and give back to the other communities and yeah man i mean as long as the the heart keeps pumping and the corona stays outside these walls uh -huh. uh, we're gonna be doing we're gonna be doing this vrml thing non-stop so i mean yeah come come check us out and uh and go go vr <laughs> yeah right a absolutely and you know 2020 might be a hellish year but we're making the best of it absolutely you can escape. And, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's you know, it's more than an escape. It's really, we're, I mean, I hate the term escape, but we we're making something that's real. These experiences are real, and they can't, you know, they can't be undervalued. Sure. Uh, but, you know, to end it on that, it's. I wanted to thank you, Nightfire. I want to thank you, No Man. I. What an excellent conversation. I. I my neck is hurting from nodding so much. Like. <laughs> What an absolutely fantastic conversation. And so I'll do the lead out. Uh, everyone who watched, everyone who will watch in the future, and everyone who participated in chat, thank you so much for tuning in for this episode. And, yeah, have a good night.